LFO Design Introduce, Fully Procedural Material Library for Redshift. Our material library is located in Cinema 4D Asset Browser. Open Asset Browser and make sure that you have properly loaded LFO Design Database folder into the Cinema 4D Asset Browser. Here are the steps on how to connect external database into the Asset Browser. As first step, download our material library. Move LFO design.zip file into preferred location on your hard drive. Unzip file. Go to the Asset Browser, Databases section. Use Connect Database option and locate LFO design folder. Now you have access to our database. How database contains five categories. First category are materials, where you will find huge amount of material presets located in material type folders. Second category are objects. Here you will find some helpful examples, objects for scattering, fractured objects, geo for greeble, or volume examples. Third category are color ramps. Fourth category are templates, where you can find the most using node connections for complex materials. So you do not need to create these connections from scratch again and again. Fifth category are our Redshift tools, which we are using for material presets to simplify material connections and its workflow as much as possible. As example, I will use Soil tool, which you can download for free from our website. Link you will find in video description. It allows you to test out compatibility with our database and also you can try out how it works. If you would like to use Redshift Material or Redshift Tool, just drag and drop selected material onto the object. As you can see, it will automatically load material into the materials field and it will create material tag as well. And because all our materials are fully procedural, you do not need to worry about UV mapping. So it's huge advantage compared to standard texture sets. As next step, double click on material and it will open shader graph where you can see how simple looks this complex material. Main part of these materials is Redshift tool. Redshift tool or RS tool is X group, which contains huge amount of connected Redshift nodes. Every R RS tool is controlled by various parameters. Cinema 4D allows you to set up UI for X groups. So as first step, select RS tool. In Attributes section, you can see now what parameters are available to control this selected RS tool. The most important is Parameter section. Here you can see three types of parameters. Integer type allows you to switch between different algorithms or modes or types. Usually it's 10 different algorithm types, where zero is default or main algorithm used for selected tool. Second parameter type, such as intensity, scale, or range, are float values, usually in range between 0 to 1. Third type of parameters are vectors. It allows you to control non-uniform scale, or offset, separately for x, y, and z axis. Cinema 4D allows you to use for Redshift X Group's custom UI. So as next step is, right click on chosen parameter and here you can find user interface section where you can choose what type of UI you prefer to use. For integer, color or vector parameter type, keep float type as it's by default. But for parameters such as intensity, scale or range, you can switch from float to bar a slider. And as you can see, it allows you to control intensity with slider now. So as next step, I will change UI from float to slider for other intensity, scale, bump, displacement, or range parameters as well. But remember that we have no control over Cinema 4D UI, so we are not able to change UI look, functionality, sliders workflow, or even port naming style. All our RS tools are using just Redshift nodes or Redshift groups and C4D user interface options. So only Maxon is able to do changes or improvements if you would like to use it different way. Once are all your changes done, Cinema 4D will remember it. So next time when you will use RS tool, you do not need to set up this UI changes anymore. As next step, we will have look on render settings. Select Redshift renderer and in sampling section, you can find denoising section. For clean result in render view, enable optics denoiser. 
But remember that this denoiso is primary for interactive work in render view, but not for final render. So disable optics for final rendering. RS tools are using default C4D units, and its sentiment is. So go to the system section, units, and make sure that you are using legacy units. If you will use incorrect units, RS tools parameters will be completely out of scale. As next step, we will have look on RS tools workflow. As you can see, our RS tools have multiple inputs and outputs. If RS tool contains two displacement outputs, it means that you can choose displacement behavior in range between 0 to 1 or range between minus 0.5 to 0.5 instead. Also, as you can see for more simple control and node connections, displacement or bump output is connected directly so you are not using additional bump or displacement node for controlling intensity or scale, and you can control these parameters directly in our RS tools instead. Material colors you will control directly in our RS tools, or with ramp node instead. Reflection roughness you will control with scalar ramp node, where for natural looking result, you can control roughness variations, or min and max roughness range. Also, you can still control all standard material parameters as you need. As next step for better demonstration on how it works, I will use simple plane object. And I will apply our material onto the simple plane. Now you can see how looks current result without lighting and displacement. So as next step, I will use physical light. And because it's soil material, I will use physical sun. As next step, I have to properly set up physical sun coordinates, but as you can see without displacement, it still looks very boring and flat. So as next step, I have to properly set up objects displacement, and as you know already, if I would like to have enabled objects displacement, I have to use Redshift's RS object tag. In geometry section, I can enable tessellation if it's needed, But what is even more important, I have to enable the displacement section. And as you can see now, result finally looks like soil with correct structure. But for good looking result is important to have correct lighting because as you can see, lights angle, intensity and position strongly affects result. Also, S's color space needs additional proper ambient light to avoid unwanted very dark parts without details. As next step, you can change material colors exactly as you need. You have full control over entire color range, and it is another huge advantage compared to texture sets. If you will add more nuts, you can create even more detailed color patterns. As I mentioned already, many of our RS tools are able to use different algorithm types, which allows you to choose between different looking patterns exactly as you need for your scene. This option is strongly increasing amount of generated patterns. Also, you have control over patterns range, so you can easily create sharper or softer looking shapes exactly as you need. Bump intensity and bump scale strongly helps with huge amount of micro details. If I will zoom in, as you can see this material contains huge amount of details, which is almost impossible to generate from standard textures. Also, you can deform this pattern with non-uniform scale exactly as you need. Offset values allows you to move pattern on exact place, or if you will increase this value strongly, it also works as pattern randomizer. So again, just with deform and offset values, you can generate different looking shapes, masks, or patterns. In Asset Browser, Materials section, you will find material presets. You can use these materials as start point or as inspiration. Also, it will help you better understand how powerful are RS tools.